Some of the world's worst toxic pollutants are traveling the globe, largely unseen, and are in tiny amounts in us all. In the 1920s, the process of electrifying the world needed cheap, inert insulation. Polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, were hailed as a universal answer. Decades later, their toxic risks were discovered, but not before millions of tons were installed in electrical equipment all over the globe. It was in Sweden that the PCB problem was discovered. It was in 1966, and then it could be understood what has happened in the wildlife during that period, that the seals couldn't conceive. If you haven't taken care of the PCB oils from an old transformator capacitator or just put it in the sewage or trying to burn it or something like that, they have been diffusely spread into the environment. And that was happening all over the world. Found to be toxic and carcinogenic, and leaking from aging transformers, PCBs were ending up in seas, like the Baltic, where they were absorbed by plankton. Because they don't readily break down, PCBs get passed into fish that eat the plankton. Bigger fish then eat the smaller ones, and so on up the food chain, until the fish are eaten by humans. The wives of Swedish fishermen were passing PCBs to their children before they were born, and through breast milk afterwards. The mainstay of their diet, fish from the Baltic. We saw the effects on the birds and seals, the deformed lava, we told the authorities. Sweden banned PCBs in 1972 and did a thorough job of removing every possible drop from substations and other sources. But we see an effect on the birth weight, indicating that there is something going on. Researchers found, perhaps for the first time, a link between environmental cause and effect. The health damage done by PCBs is now decreasing, now that PCBs have been banned and cleaned up. Yet the Baltic still has PCBs and other POPs, often coming from far away. POPs are a global problem, requiring a global solution. Uninvited, and more than anywhere else, Pops arrive in the once pristine Arctic north of Canada to threaten the way of life of the Inuit. We are um, under a threat uh, of many different kinds of pollutions that are not made by us here. We are starting to see more abnormalities of, in species, seals, caribou, you know, and then parasites in, in polar bears and so forth. So we're starting to see uh, all these changes. We don't know if we're eating pollutants as well. And if this cycle or the pollutants are going to go into our cycle, you're going to break the whole cycle of, of the earth. More than half of all Inuit women have levels of POPs above those regarded as safe by the World Health Organization. They had something posted for contaminated meat and I, I thought about it, but I wasn't going to stop breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Breastfeeding is still recommended as beneficial and so too are country foods traditionally fished and hunted. The Inuit have little choice but to eat their traditional foods, the very sort that store and accumulate pops in their fatty tissues, foods like caribou, whale and seal. Nor do they want to change, it's their way of life. It's not just about contaminants in our country food, but what is connected to that and our way of life and the hunting. We are a people who have completely respected and lived in harmony with our land and with, the, with wildlife and our resources all around us. At greatest risk are children because children are rapidly growing and developing and the effects that POPs can have on the body 
can't affect the systems that are involved with children's development, whether it's development of their brain, the immune system, the endocrine system, um, and also because their exposures are relatively greater.